Hello and welcome to Wellness Wednesday Live. I am Bethany Zell. I'm the Program Director for Healthy You at Cary Medical Center. And I am thrilled to be joined today by Dr. Sherry Dumont, who is the Medical Director at Pines Health Services. Welcome, Dr. Dumont. How are you today? I'm well. Thank you for having me. Great. Well, we're here today because this is National Immunization Awareness Month. And as a primary care provider and the medical director at Pines, you are very involved in the routine immunization and preventative vaccine care of the patients that are coming in and out of all of the Pines Health Services facilities. So why are routine immunizations and preventative vaccines important to our communities? Well, the bottom line is they help prevent um, harmful diseases. Uh, we're very fortunate in this day and age um, to have had decades now of effective vaccines to prevent uh, deadly illness that used to really ravage um, many people across the world. Um, I think we all have family members that have probably told us stories of um, ancestors or people they knew who at some point were affected by some of the diseases that now are very rare. And it's only because of a successful vaccine program that we have been able to, for the most part, eradicate some of these illnesses. Um, you know, polio, I think several people are probably familiar with someone who has suffered from polio. Um, that's really only two generations away from my own. Um, uh, diphtheria, we're probably all familiar with the stories from Nome, Alaska and the dog sled team that went to get the vaccine um, and the treatment needed to treat the children. Um, there are stories that are that are well known, um, wide, you know, countrywide, like Nome, and then within individual families. Um, those diseases are real, and they uh, have very severe consequences, including death, um, meningitis, severe permanent brain injury for those who survive. Um, paralysis, uh, the list goes on. But we don't see it very often because of vaccines. Uh, it was, I believe it was last year, there was um, an outbreak of measles in other parts of this country that had come in from other countries um, and from a group of people who preferred not to vaccinate. Um, and we saw what happened. Measles is very contagious. Um, so that's why it's so important. And, and now with COVID-19, people are able to see firsthand um, what a virus can do when there's nothing to help put it at bay. Um, and so just imagine back in the day when measles, mumps, uh, polio, diphtheria, all of those things were all running around. Um, imagine what it was like. It's crazy. I mean, and we're seeing even now just the impacts of COVID kind of spreading so quickly from, you know, community in central Maine to southern Maine. And, you know, when you don't have those vaccines that kind of create that barrier of protection, it, it can really be eye-opening to see yeah. the impact. And so it's right, you know, no one, I, you know, you never hear of people having measles and, you know, mumps and rubella anymore. We only recognize some of those terms from when we used to get the vaccines as kids and, and babies. And so it's interesting that there are some of those outbreaks now coming back of diseases that we thought were, were gone. And as you said, it's a direct result of some of these limitations on vaccinations in parts of the world that might not have access or those who make the decision not to vaccinate for personal reasons. So as we're moving closer to the typical flu season and we're looking at you know flu vaccines and flu shot clinics coming up 
and be coming into play. How are you advising your patients in regard to those vaccinations? Are you kind of telling them to keep continuing to access those vaccines through a typical clinic, or are you recommending that they come to primary care providers? Or I believe some of the pharmacies in the areas in some of our communities are, are now offering them there. Um, do you have any recommendations? Um, I advise that they simply get it. Um, we anticipate beginning our um, flu shots within the practice in mid-September. Um, we have received some, but we have multiple doses for multiple age groups and, and risk patients. And so we're waiting for all of them to, to come in. Um, but if a patient prefers to get it at the pharmacy, if they prefer to get it at um, one of the clinics that's offered in the community, that is perfectly fine. Um, whatever is going to be easiest for them, whatever is going to um, work best for their schedule, their family, um, or whatever accommodation they need, it doesn't matter. Just please get your flu vaccine. Um, you mentioned now, particularly with COVID, it's even more important uh, this year for people to be vaccinated because the symptoms really overlap uh, one another. Um, many of the, the childhood diseases um, and viruses that affect both adults and children overlap with flu and um, COVID-19. And so early on, it's nearly impossible to determine what virus you may have um, or if it is another, you know, potentially bacterial process. Um, <clears throat> so the more things that you're current with your vaccinations with, the less likely that you would be infected, uh, at least with a severe infection with those ailments. Um, which offers, you know, it offers you a layer of protection and it makes it a little bit easier for healthcare personnel uh, to move forward with um, assessing risk uh, when we're looking at how to treat early on. Um, so we have tests, of course, for influenza. We have tests for COVID-19. We have tests for um, a variety of respiratory illnesses that we can, that we can do, um, but it's, helpful if folks are vaccinated um, for those things that, that, that can be vaccinated for, and particularly flu. As we reach um, influenza uh, time frame for us, which is generally October to early May, um, if we acquire a COVID outbreak, heaven forbid, our um, healthcare personnel, our healthcare equipment, our um, services are going to be stretched. And um, the less likely you are to acquire influenza, the less likely you are to require those services that are going to be potentially harder to come by. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we're pushing very hard. We push hard every year for people to get their flu vaccine. Um, again, we're fortunate. Um, we don't see a lot of demise, um, but there's more than what people think. Um, mm -hmm. Influenza by itself accounts for a significant amount of morbidity and mortality every year. Some have just mild cases. Some aren't that fortunate. And Sometimes it's not just influenza that leads to someone's demise. Sometimes it's the stress of the virus that causes heart attack. It causes a stroke. It causes kidney damage. Um, so it's the other things that happen as a result of influenza that can also lead to demise. That's a great point that you brought up too about freeing up the resources that might need to be utilized for someone who's diagnosed with the, the normal flu as opposed to COVID and, you know, the possibility that if COVID cases do ramp up around here, that some of those resources will 
not be as readily available or as quickly available or um, and I'm sure that it's got to be a little frustrating on the medical side to even have people coming in and presenting symptoms that could go either way. They could be COVID, they could be just the standard form of the flu. Um, are you seeing a lot of patients coming in with flu-like symptoms? I know in the beginning with COVID, we were opening up the clinic and there were quite a few people that were concerned about COVID and came in with those kinds of symptoms. Are we still seeing increased numbers of people presenting with those types of symptoms? Not, not really. Um, you know, there's a, a wide variety of symptoms uh, that, that are associated with COVID and, and unfortunately they're the same. Very many of them are the same that can be seen with many other illnesses. Um, even allergies, you know, a runny nose, a sore throat. Um, it could be something like allergies, but unfortunately we don't necessarily know until we ask more questions, um, assess risk as far as contacts and travel, um, et cetera. And so there are going to be, there have been, and there are going to be um, more questions that need to be asked for anyone that has any of those types of symptoms. Um, and that's simply in an effort to keep everyone safe. Um, we need to assess people appropriately in the appropriate setting um, in a safe way for both the providers, nurses, and uh, other patients and the patient that's being assessed themselves. Um, we've tried to do our best, uh, both at Pines and Cary, to do that. Um, we certainly realize that it's inconvenient for some, um, but it's really done in the best interest of our patients and our community. Um, and that we're going to have to continue going forward. Um, I'm sure we'll be getting a lot more phone calls than we're used to, just trying to help folks figure out what should I do? Uh, do I need to be seen, um, et cetera. Yeah, and I'm sure too, as we see the schools begin to open and there will be additional screening points at the schools, I'm sure that we're going to see some increases in people coming with symptoms that maybe didn't pass screening at school or at work. Um, and then, of course, as the weather changes and people are, the, people's bodies are acclimating to those differences and, you know, seasonal yeah. allergies come into play. So I'm glad that the Pines and the Cary teams are both prepared to deal with whatever influx we might have. Um, how have how have you been seeing in the practice routine immunizations? How have they been impacted by the pandemic? I mean, mm -hmm. most babies are on kind of a regular schedule. And so I'm assuming when this all happened and offices shut down, those schedules got disrupted. Yeah. So, so early on, it was recommended that um, only, you know, people who needed to be seen come into the office and um, well visits were sort of put on hold uh, for probably a month or so longer in other areas of the state and across the country. Um, but because we had such um, low numbers, knock on wood, uh, we were able to open our offices back up a little sooner than some others in the state. Um, Nonetheless, we still had a decrease in volume from those who needed to be postponed, as well as uh, those who were still uh, concerned and, and not really wanting to come in unless they had to, even after we got back up into uh, a full swing, so to speak. Um, so yes, we have seen as a result of that, a decline in the pediatric um, immunizations for those who didn't come in, as well as for adults for any that they were due for or needed to, to catch up on, um, you know, for their visits as well. So we are working on trying to get folks uh, caught up. Um, we have strongly encouraged um, folks to come in to get their routine vaccinations, especially the children. The children need to be current. Um, I know that there's been some discussion or some um, thoughts out there that uh, among parents that they, they want to sort of slow the rate of the vaccines down and, and do fewer at a time. 
Um, that's it's not recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics, um, and it's not because they won't be ready in time. They won't be protected in time before they are at the risk of developing those diseases. And so that's why the schedule was made the way it was made. It was to get them prepared, to prepare their bodies <laughs> um, uh, in an appropriate time frame. And particularly those who are going to school, you really need to be um, fully protected. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So as things are opening back up and you said your offices are now kind of back into the swing of things, are you noticing this increase? Are people be beginning to feel more comfortable and come back out for some of the routine screenings? Is it gradual? Have you seen your numbers kind of get back up to where they were pre-COVID or pretty close? How far yeah. off are we? Yeah, in the primary care world, our numbers are pretty close to what they were. Um, surgery, I'm not so sure in the surgical specialties, but in the primary care world, yeah, um, we are back up to, to where we typically are. Great. Well, I'm so glad that we could talk today. I'm really thankful for the information about the vaccines and, you know, it is super important. And I'm glad that we have this month to kind of think about this topic and encourage people to get out and get the routine screenings and vaccines and immunizations that they need. Um, and of course, in light of the pandemic and potential vaccines that might be coming down the pike for that, it's even more important now than ever to to stay current with your vaccinations. So thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you being here. And for those who are watching, we hope to see you back in September for our next Wellness Wednesday Live on the second and the fourth Thursday or Wednesday of September. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.